10 years. I just combined the both, came up with why not sports, talk about the good, bad, and the ugly of sports and how it impacts your everyday life. Yeah, because it does. And it directly it directly correlates. That's why sports is talked yeah. about so much because yeah. sports can also be mixed in the politics. Sports can yep. also be mixed in the food. You, you see yep. like how sports can is is a central language most of the time. Most people have yep. some favorite sports team and and even where when I see people coming into my job, if they have on any type of sports memorabilia, I'm gonna be like, Hey, how, how what do you think about about the Sooners or whatever, whatever they have on? Mm-hmm. They will gladly they would be so excited because that's everybody's everybody's got a passion uh yep. in some type of shape or form in sports. So Yes sir. Great point. Great point. Why not sports, D. Murph? Um, so we do have an interactive chat room, um, so you may get some questions or comments that may be coming through that I'll read. Um, That's cool. I appreciate that. Cool. One by Big L says, so he's not ESPN. Great. Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. That's another reason why I'm glad they brought that up, because ESPN, man, when they got rid of Jamel Hill, that was another reason why I said, man, create your own platform. Because after a while, that's intimidating for a person of color who knows the game, who knows more about, you know, current events and just, you know, the issues for the black community. And it's being thrown or or, or your quote-unquote ESPN platform is being used to voice, you know, our issues. Yeah, I knew that was intimidating. So again, when you're independent, such as myself, I feel I know and sort of feel I know I can do whatever I want to do, how I want to do it, but still have some positive, you know, positive influence or a positive impact as a whole. Right. So yeah. Right. Now you you were a former former D one athlete. Did you play yes. basketball? Yes, sir. A basketball player. Born and raised in Gary, Indiana. Mom had me at sixteen. So for me, basketball, I I like to tell people it's a cliche. Well, it's either going to be sports or or, or the rap game or, you know, it was going to help you, you know, music going to help you get out the hood. And, well, it was for me, it was sports. Uh, It was basketball, to be exact. Got the scholarship to play at Texas A&M in Corpus Christi and got the free ride, graduated with an accounting degree, and it allowed me to travel, go to night hotels, yeah, I'm the oldest of four. Mom had me at 16, so growing up, man, I knew sports was my way out. Hell, I had water. I was going to do something to where I was going to get a free education, and yeah. sports was it for me. Texas A&M, all right. And um, real quick, Texas A&M uh, basketball. Uh, I don't know. I can't really think of where they are, where they're at right now. I know they didn't do too well in the in the Big 12, but Texas Tech right now is – is it uh, Chris Beard and that whole program? Well, remember, I went to end Corpus Christi. Oh, Corpus Christi. At the Christi, time, we were independent, yeah. So right oh. now, they're in the South. Oh, South Conference? South Conference. Okay. Yep, yep. With like Stephen A. Austin, Lamar. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, yep, gotcha. yep. University of New Orleans. Yep. So we got uh, a couple newcomers in the chat room. We got Gary G. Money Joiner. Thank you for tuning in, officer. We got uh, Togo Team Broadcasting. Appreciate you guys coming through in the chat room. So, former player podcasting, uh, what what has been your? And we kind of talked about this. What has been kind of the talk about the roller coaster of of podcasting, the ups and downs, and also how how you balance life? Because you know, like, like we talked about this, I did a, I was doing a Saturday show every Saturday religiously and, and mm-hmm. it almost got to the point my wife was like we don't do anything like you all yeah. you do is you focus about this show so then you know that produces arguments that produces but life happens That's you gotta That's work fact. you gotta work yep. you gotta bring in money you cannot yep. like this is great and, and you make I'll make some money with it but ultimately you gotta take care of your family but yep. talk about talk about that and how that journey's been three years now well, the love for podcasting for me is, is really is, is not hard because I'm a natural talker. Also, I'm a natural listener. So I have the best of both. Like right now, I'm a guest on your show. So a lot of times, man, I've just been fortunate enough to be able to work and collaborate with a lot of people, man. Being women, young, old, with experience, really not that much experience. But it's about just 
treating people the way you want to be treated and knowing that everyone has a story, his story or her story. And podcasting is, is great. It's allowing me to be able to vent to the world, which is sometimes like, you know, crazy. But uh, people who rock with me from the beginning uh, in 2016 to now have seen my growth. They have seen the work that was put in. And then, like you said, with the family, man, I just kind of told my wife, I said, hey, if I'm not happy in my life, how can I reciprocate that to you in turn my kids? And I think as a head of the household, you need to be that foundation or that uh, role model so your kids can know. Well, my dad is the big homie D. Murph, man, as my, as my oldest son. So he's four. I say, like, oh, well, big deal, thank you. Yeah, I like to always, I, I, I like to uplift my kids to speak those things to his life. I mean, he, he know how to go to no matter, you know, Spotify, whatever, and just type in, you know, my name that comes up and he's, you know, showing everybody that's my dad. And it's just, it's just giving, giving them something to say, hey, no matter what, you can do whatever you want to. I didn't have that growing up. Um, but like you said, you know, with my wife, just kind of letting her know I love her and the kids, and I'm doing this ultimately for us, so we can be able to, you know, travel the world, and because people booking me for events or speaking engagements or being a, a panelist on the live show, whatever, because podcasting can, has led, for me personally, so many opportunities, man. I've been to events where I'm linking up with, you know, celebrities such as Leon, um, athletes such as Adrian Peterson, Mike Evans, De'Aaron Fox, and, you know, the list goes on and on. And it's like, oh, it's when we blew after a while. We we can start getting ourselves an opportunity. Where now, when I come across people and they ask about you, and I say, you can come in and introduce yourself. And you never know who, you know, can can use your services. She's uh, uh, an, an accountant, uh, and she's doing great things. And I'm like, hey, with all that money that they earn, it, they need somebody to help balance their books. So anyway, that's kind of my, been my pitch, and she's been very supportive. And there have been times, like I told you. Uh, being it's like, hey, I might not upload my show every day. When I first started, it was Monday and Friday, Monday and Friday, because I have another podcast as well. But now it's like, hey, I've earned my stripes. People, when I you know talk on my show, they know I do have a family, but they know I'm being consistent. They know, we know Murph's going to drop this week. We just don't know when. And some people like might say, hey, man, do you worry about losing your followers? Not really, because my true followers going to stick with me. And then, too, my real followers, hell how water is my family and that's what I gotta exactly. take care of first. Exactly. True. We got D Murph on the line. Uh podcaster, fellow podcaster, why not sports? Uh started in the game in 2016. And and you're right, it, it's opened up so many doors. And like to the point you were talking about your kids, like my daughter, she's seven. And she's <laughs> Is she when she's watching me, she's like, I want to do my own podcast too. I mean, and yeah. it's almost like I'm at the age I'm at now. If I'm instilling that in her, and she's she's starting now at seven, by the time yep. she gets eighteen, she yep. could have a, a, a multi-billion-dollar podcast. She could be on the radio because you start early, you start teaching yep. your kids these things early that you know, and then as they get older, all they're going to do is continue to learn more continue to yep. grow more she may go to school for journalism radio wh- whatever it may be she's yeah. got the she's got the excitement for it and everything so that and to me whenever i talk to people i always say uh podcasting is, is so flexible you can talk about whatever you want it does not have to yep. be sports it doesn't have to yep. be politics it can be hit hit live and talk about whatever you're thinking about and, and, and that, <laughs> right. that kind That's of stuff is, is successful because it's real it's real talk yep. you're not you're not Direct. You don't have to talk about certain things. You don't even have to. You don't have to have sponsors. Or you don't have to do any of that stuff. That that's yep. the freedom right. of uh, podcasting. But let, let's get into uh, NBA here. We got so many trades going on this summer. NBA yes, summer's been crazy. Uh, the yes, title sir. of today's show: NBA more NBA trades or not? And I wanted to start off ask you that. Uh, but talk about this NBA summer first. This is how crazy it's been. Players going every which or where, trades happening in the middle of the night. All yep. That. The biggest thing, man, as I've gotten older and in the industry, 
it's a business, man. It also is entertainment. So for me, balancing out the league is definitely a dope look because I'm not going to lie, man. I didn't really watch the past couple of seasons. I mean, I watched them, but I, now with these moves, I'm man, I'm going to have it on my phone. Like, I got to be on top of it because it's going to be great matchups. Before, you used to circle on counter. Okay, this is going to be a good game. This is going to be a good game. Now, it's going to be a good game more times than not. True. Which is good for me as a sports fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm excited, man. Like you said, the PG and Kawhi teaming up, which I never really anticipated, at least this soon. Uh, Russell Westbrook, James Hart. A lot of the duos, AD, LeBron. A lot of these duos, man, is like, wow, where are they coming from? And it's beautiful. (laughs) I'm loving a duo. Like, bring back NBA Jam. You know what I'm saying? We talk about duos, and for those who, you know, tell my age a little bit, man, the, at that time, the duos was popping. Every team, for the most part, you had those two or those duos that you was interested in playing with, right? Right. And I think the league is going back to that slowly but surely. Yeah. And and you, you make a great point. Watching regular season NBA games, is almost like unless it's it's on a Saturday or a Sunday, me sitting down on a Tuesday night watching the NBA game, it's probably not going to happen. And right. now you 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 especially Western Conference matchups the way this is, you are yeah. the NBA is forcing you to say you need to watch regular season games yep. just as much as you watch playoff games. Playoffs. And they've right. done a great job at it. They've done a great yeah. job at not only increasing the quality of the league, but also coming in, in close comparison to the NFL, because you know NFL owns Sundays, sometimes Thursdays, depending on what game it is. But Right, 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 right. They, yeah, they, they, NBA has done a great job at uh, revamping their game and making their game mm-hmm. the focus, which is that's that's the part that, that makes, I think, myself excited and a lot of other people. Now, yeah. You've got you've got Kawhi that goes to the Clippers. Um, Trey going down really in the in it seemed like it was in the middle of the night. I happened to be up. It was. I'm looking at the phone and I'm like, okay, the phone's blowing up. Um, I see Kawhi's name, so I'm like, okay, he went to one of the LA teams. Deep down, I feel I had a feeling he wasn't gonna go to the to the Lakers because that's never been to me. That's never been his mo. His mo has always been um, I'm a lay low. And going to the Lakers yep. is not laying low. That that's like right. riding high on right. the sunset if, if you're gonna go over to the Lakers. Right. Uh, but he, he made the move and went to the Clippers. Do you possibly see any other trades going down um this summer? You know, we got C P three lingering out there. Uh, yep. do you see anything else that could possibly happen? Man, I I I've been telling this to a lot of people, uh, especially on my platform, and still, Kyle Lowry, man. I know regardless of how he played in the regular season and maybe the first two rounds of the playoffs, don't don't think that he's not out there either trying to see what he can do and where he can go. So CP3 and Kyle Lowry are the two names that I'm like, they might be going somewhere. Well, we know CP, but CP don't leave OKC. No matter what, I, and again, I know like just like the uh, listener said, you know, no ESPN. I'm not saying all my sources, but from what I've gathered and just kind of what I've been able to see, I, I don't see CP, you know, going to or uh, staying to OKC because he wants to win. He wants to win. I believe Kyle Lowry. Now that Kyle Lowry has won, now he can be go. You know, he can go somewhere or, or be that captain of a team and help somebody you know, go to that, you know, championship level. So I think both are going to contenders where right now. Uh, I'm a Spurs fan. Shout out to the Spurs. Kawhi to the Spurs, one of the greatest Spurs of all time. So no matter where he go, I'm a root for him. But don't be don't be surprised the Spurs, man, gonna gonna pick up uh somebody. It can be either Kyle Lowry or C P three. Man, I'm glad you brought up the Spurs because there's when we're going around a, a Demar Derozan, which I'm like, why would they even? Why would they do that? That that almost they had to. They had to. Kawhi was ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about. Why would they? There's a story talking about Demar Derozan being traded from the Spurs somewhere else. That's my point. They really didn't want to trade Kawhi, so they was like, well, I guess we'll take Demar. Yeah. I'm just being transparent. It's like right, uh, right, I mean, right. he, he, 
he don't play that defense like the clock. True. True. We looking for a defensive minded team or at least one to be the captain.